and welcome to section 5.3. Uh, in this uh, lesson, we are going to be working on factoring three term trinomials uh, when the first value is not equal to 1. So in the last section, uh, we worked uh, right here on uh, factoring trinomials that uh, whose first value was 1. So for example, x squared plus 6x plus 8. We did problems like these where the first value was 1. And we learned that to do these kind of problems, you just take the factors of the last term. So in this case, 8. And you write out all the factors, 8 and 1 and 4 and 2. And you find out which one equals the middle one, which is 6. And that's 4 and 2. So the answer is x plus 4 and x plus 2. Now, in this section, we're going to talk about when, what we do when the a value does not equal 1. For example, what if we had 5x squared plus 11x plus 2? Ooh. Now, this, is, this does not follow the same rules, because this first one, uh, this a value, is not equal to 1. So we've got to use a different rule. And uh, the rule that we're going to learn is the ac rule. Uh, it's a really good rule, and uh, let's get to it. OK, so uh, when factoring a three-term polynomial, when the first value is not equal to 1, you got to use what's called the AC rule. And uh, step one is to do AC. So you take the first value times the last value, so A times C. In this situation, our A is 5, and our C is 2. So 5 times 2 equals 10. OK. Easy enough. The next one there, the next step is to find factors of AC. that add to the middle term. OK, so uh, I, this, is, this looks just like normal three-term uh, factoring, what we did in the last section, except we're going to use the number 10. We're going to use the number AC, because AC equaled 10. And we're going to write out the factors of 10. So there's 2 and 5, there's 10 and 1, there's, that's it. And we want to use the factors that add up to the middle term. Now, the middle term was 11. And so we're going to use 10 and 1. That's step number 2. Step number 3 is to rewrite as a four-term polynomial, as four-term poly. OK, so we're going to rewrite this entire thing right here. But we're going to rewrite it as a four-term polynomial. So I'm going to write everything the same, except we're going to use a new middle term. So I'm going to write out 5x squared. And instead of putting 11x, what we're going to do is use our new factors. So we're going to put plus 10x and plus 1x. And then lastly, we're going to put in plus 2. So again, all I did was rewrite this with a new middle term. Okay, So notice that it was 5x squared plus 11x plus 2. The only thing I did was change the middle term. So that's step number three, is to rewrite as a middle term. Step number four, I kind of ran out of room here, is factor by grouping. Factor by grouping. So now that we have a four-term polynomial, we're just going to go ahead and factor this by grouping. And uh, we learned that in the first section. And we learned that when you factor by grouping, you chop the problem in half. <laughs> Chainsaw. <laughs> OK. Uh, and then we factor the left side. So I think we can take out a 5x. 5, 5, good. That would leave us with x plus, and since I took a 5x out here, it'd be 2. Here, there's nothing to take out. So we just have an x plus 2. And you may want to remember that there's an implied 1 out in the front. And so our final answer is 5x plus 1, and then the common parenthesis, which was x plus 2. This is our answer. Ooh, I kind of ran out of room there. Kind of got a little crowded. Let me do another one, just to make sure uh, everybody kind of understands the idea. OK, so here's another one. Uh, we see if there's any common stuff. That's the first rule of factoring. No common stuff. We then count the terms. We've got three terms. And the first value is not equal to 1. So we apply the AC rule. Step number 1 says to take A 
times c, which in this case is 6 times 3. Step number 2, 6 times 3 by the way is 18. Step number 2 says to find the factors of 18 that add up to 11. So I've got 18 and 1 that doesn't add up to 11. Uh, we've got uh, 2 and 9. Ooh, that does add up to 11. Okay, so those are the factors we want to use. Step number three is to rewrite it as a four-term polynomial. So the first and last terms stay the same, so I've got 6x squared. But instead of writing 11x, we're going to use the new factors, the 2, so plus 2x, and the 9, plus 9x, and then, of course, the original 3 that was from the top up here in the original problem. Now I have a four-term polynomial. Four-term polynomials, chop them in half. Over here, we take out a 2x, because that's common to both of these, leaving me with 3x plus 1. Here, we take out a 3. That leaves me with 3x plus 1. And remember, when factoring by grouping, you pull out the common parenthesis. 3x plus 1 is the common parenthesis. And then we write what was left over on the left and the right side, so it would be 2x plus 3. And that's how we factor three term polynomials using the AC rule. Okay, so uh, let's have you guys try some uh, AC rule uh, problems here. So we're going to go ahead and uh, here's two for you to do. Go ahead and take out your video notebook and pause the video and uh, then uh, use the AC rule, these four steps, and then go ahead and uh, push the play button when you're ready to resume. Okay, how'd you do? Let's take a look. Uh, AC rule here. So I'm going to take A times C. That's step number one. That uh, gets me 30. And I want to find the factors of 30 that add up to 17. So uh, there's 3 and 10. No, nope, there's uh, uh, 30 and 1. No, nope, that doesn't add to 17. There's uh, 6 and 5. No, that doesn't add to 17. Uh, there are, oh, 15 and 2. 15 and 2 does add to 17. So those are the factors we want to use when we rewrite the middle term. So uh, let's do that now. I've got 5x squared. I'm rewriting the middle term with these new factors. So 15x plus 2x plus 6. Again, the 5x squared and the 6 just come from the original problem. But we rewrite the middle term so that we can do factor by grouping. Let's do that now. So factor by grouping is the next step here. I'm going to chop this problem in half. Over here, between the 5x squared and the 15x, I can take out a 5x, leaving me with x plus 3. Okay, good. Over here, I've got a plus, and I take out a 2, leaving me with x plus 3. Yes, these parentheses are the same, and so I can I pull out the like parenthesis, and I'm just left over with 5x plus 2 from the left and the right side. That's the first one. How'd you do? Now, if you didn't get that first one, maybe now is a good time to pause the video and try this second one using the AC rule. I'm going to go over it right now. AC rule says to take A times C. 8 times a negative 5 is negative 40. I need to find the factors of negative 40 that add up to 18. Now, I kind of automatically see this one because it's it's 2 and 20. 2 and 20 is going to work as long as I make the right one negative. If I want to get positive 18, I'm going to make the, the negative 2 so that when these add, I get 18. Okay, good. Now I can rewrite. That's step number 3. 8x squared. And instead of writing 18x, I'm going to use the factors that I found minus 2x plus 20x minus 5. Okay, remember the 8x and the 5 uh, just stay in the rewrite. But the middle term is what gets rewritten. Okay, now we're ready for factor by grouping. I'm going to chop the problem in half. Over here, ooh, what can come out of 8x squared and negative 2x? It's going to be 2x leaving me with 4x minus 1. Okay. And here, what can come out of 20 and 5 is just a 5, so plus 5, and I'm left with 4x minus 1. Those parentheses are the same, so we pull them out, 4x minus 1. And what would be left over? If I pulled this parenthesis out, I'd be left with 2x 
and this parenthesis got pulled out so I'm just left with plus 5 and that's our answer now the cool thing about algebra is, is that you can always check your factoring answers uh, if I wanted to check to make sure this is right I could go ahead and super distribute these out so I could take 4x times 2x that's 8x squared, 4x plus five, times a plus 5 is plus 20x, 2x and minus 5, and I can make sure that I get 8x squared, 20x minus 2x is plus 18x minus 5. Ha <laughs> ha, yes! It checks out. It's exactly what we started with. So remember, you can always check your answers when you're doing factoring. Let's look at two more questions for you, number three and four. Go ahead and use the AC rule. Make sure that you've got this down. You can pause the video now and then uh, check your answers when you're done. Okay, in this problem here, we're going to apply the AC rule, which states to take A times C. Four times seven is 28. I need to find the factors of 28 that come out to be negative 16. 28, well, there's one in 28. There's what, two and two in 14? Whoa, is that right? Yeah, these work. 2 and 14 is going to add up to 16. Sweet. As long as we make them both negative. So we make them both negative, so they add up to negative 16. Time to rewrite. Here we go. 4x squared minus 2x minus 14x plus 7. Time to chainsaw. Over here, we take out a 2x, leaving me with 2x minus 1. Over here, we're going to take out a negative 7, leaving me with 2x minus 1. We factor out a negative. That changes this sign right here. Okay, so take out our common parenthesis, which is 2x minus 1, and then write what would be left over, which is 2x minus 7. Okay, so AC rule on that one. Nice. Let's go to number 4 here. Number 4, A times C. Well, 9 times 1 is just 9 and the factors of 9 that add up to 6. Well, there's 9 and 1, that doesn't add up to 6. There's 3 and 3, yes, we use that. We then rewrite the problem. Rewrite the original problem, 9x squared, but with the new middle factors, 3x plus 3x plus 1. Again, the 9x and the 1 came from here, and the 3 and the 3 came from here. Okay, last step is to factor by grouping. Over here we can take out a 3x, we're left with 3x plus 1. Here we take out, ooh, 3x plus 1, we already have that. So I'm just going to write it in a parenthesis. So we just factored out a 1, basically. We pull out the common parenthesis, which is 3x plus 1. And what would be left over? Well, it would be this 3 and this 1, so 3x plus 1. Those are our answers for those two AC rule questions. So up to this moment now, we have covered the <clears throat> three types of factoring. We've covered uh, what happens when you have three-term factoring, and we've covered what happens when you have four-term factoring, um, and hopefully uh, this, is, this is how much of the chart we now know. So um, again, if you can kind of get an idea from this chart of how to factor, I think it can really help. Um, master the steps because there's a lot of different types of factoring and in the next uh, future lessons we'll be adding on even more so just remember that you always take out the common stuff then count the number of terms if it's a trinomial you then ask yourself is the first value one or is it not one if it's one you just find the factors of c that add up to b if it's not one then you apply the ac rule take a times c and then find the factors of a times c that add up to b then rewrite as a four-term polynomial. If it has four terms, then we factor by grouping. Okay, let's take a look. Uh, we're going to throw up three questions, and each one involves uh, using one of these paths to solve. And we'll see if you can identify the path, and then factor the question. Okay, here are three questions. Again, these all uh, use different routes in our factoring chart, all use different methods. See if you can go through and factor these. And uh, go ahead and pause the video now, and then uh, give it a shot. And when you're ready to check your answer, you push the play button. 
Okay, so here we go. Number one, any common stuff? No common stuff on this one. I think I left the common stuff out uh, just to make sure we understood the routes. I then count the number of terms. This is one, two, three terms. So now we're right here. So we did this. Now we're right here. And then I ask myself, uh, is the a value 1 or not 1? Well, this one is 1. So I go ahead and apply. I just find the factors of c uh, that add up to b. So the factors of c, that's negative 50. I want to find the factors of negative 50 that get me 23. So uh, there's 1 and 50, 2 and 10, no, uh, 5 and 10. Oh, it's not 2 and 10, it's 5 and 10. That's funny. 5 and 10. What about 2 and 25? Ooh, 2 and 25. I could get 23 out of that if I made the 2 negative. Sweet. So that's what I want to do. These are my two terms. And so because we're just using uh, this method here, we just write those as our answer. x minus 2, x plus 25. Now some of you may have went ahead and tried to apply the AC rule here. Uh, if you do it right, you will get the same answer, but there's no need to write the AC, do the AC rule because, well, the first value is just 1. Okay, next one. I'm going to change my color. Uh, I'm going to go ahead. This is a uh, factor out the common stuff. Yes, count the number of terms. 1, 2, 3, 4. This is factoring by grouping. So here I take out an x squared. I'm left with x plus 7. Here I'm going to take out a negative 5, which leaves me with x plus 7. Uh, I take out the common parenthesis. I get x plus 7, and then I write in what's left over, which was x squared minus 5. So that's using factoring by grouping. And for this problem over here, uh, this is uh, factor out any common stuff. There's nothing common. Count the number of terms. That's 1, 2, 3 terms. I then ask myself, is the first value 1 or not 1? Well, that's definitely not 1. That's a 7. So I have to apply the AC rule. So I'm going to take 7 times 10, which is 70. I need to find the factors of 70 that add up to 19. Well, there's 7 and 10, 2 and 35. There's 5 and 14. Ooh, 5 and 14 sounds good. I'm going to get 19 if I did that. Good. So now I rewrite the problem. 7x squared plus 5x plus 14x plus 10. Again, these just came from the original problem. And then I don't use the middle term. I rewrite it with those new terms. Factor by grouping. Here I'm going to take out uh, just an x. I just take out an x. I'm left with 7x plus 5. Here I'm going to take out what goes into 14 and 10? 2. Pull out a 2. I'm left with 7x plus 5. These parentheses are common. So I'm going to write 7x plus 5. And then what would be left over? The x plus 2. So that was my answer there for number 3. And this was my answer for number two. OK, we've reviewed all of uh, the things we've learned now. Uh, you can go ahead and continue on to the assignment. Uh, if you need to review any of these uh, ideas, go ahead and uh, go back. And uh, you can rewind if you need to. If you need help, you can contact a, a tutor or stop by the tutor center. You can even call them if you need to. Uh, call their number. Or uh, stop by and visit with your teacher. Thanks for watching, and good luck with the assignment. Uh, where you will be using AC rule, and then there'll be a couple where you use uh, different methods as well. Have a great day.